Here's a little about a system I work on up here in South Dakota. Um, this is a 14 foot diameter wind turbine that we built at a workshop some years ago. Um, I think it's on a 126 foot tower. The turbine itself, like I said, we built it at a workshop. 14 foot diameter wooden blades. Blades are made from western red cedar, and it has an axial flux alternator. Um, I won't get into details about the alternator itself. There's there's more on my channel about that now. Be more to come. But it's got a it frills to the side. I wish it was windy so we could see it running, but it's not. Um, zoom in and get some detail of the turbine. You can see the the tail pivot and the tail is held in place with a chain and it, it can swing up in a high wind. Blades will furl to the side. This machine is probably about 10 years old. The tower is made of a uh, 8 inch tubing. This is actually an NRG Met Tower. It's been repurposed. So we had to rebuild the top of the tower to accommodate the wind turbine. So I just welded a tower stub up there and there's some reinforcement inside. We had to move the guy wires. Top guy wires are just a little below the tips of the blades. So, I, yeah, I think it's 126 feet. It's a tilt-up tower. I'll walk over to the base of the tower and show you what's going on there. Here I am at the base of the tower. Um, this is not the original tower base. I remade this. It's got a 3-8 steel. So you can see the tower tips down this way. And when it goes down, the gym pole tips up. There's the gym pole. Um, oftentimes I'll leave the gym pole attached. On this tower, the gym pole is fairly short. So when we raise the tower, we have to disconnect all the cables from the end of the gym pole. This is up here somewhere. There's the end of the gym pole. So we unhook all the cables from here and we transfer them up here to the east anchor. And at the bottom of this, we would have pulleys. Um, I forget how many pulleys, quite a few. Um, and this is the anchor for the gym pole to pull the tower up and we put a hydraulic winch back here. It's pretty easy to do. Side anchors are moved forward to the direction the tower tilts down so that they always get a little bit slack as the tower goes down and they come back into tight when the tower is raised. This tower's got four sets of guy wires. And four anchors. You have to have four anchors for a tilt-up tower. Go up to the powerhouse and look at some of that stuff. This is the powerhouse where the balance of system is. Um, this system, it, although it's got grid power, um, it has run off grid for a while until he recently brought in grid power. So this is a um, really a backup power system, although the client prefers to run off-grid, and he can. Um, there's quite a bit of solar on this system, too. We have an array here. I forget how big it is. I think it's about 3 kW. And over here we have a, about a 10 kilowatt array. And inside here is where all the goodies are. 
So for the wind turbine, this is the rectifier. Um, this just wind wind power coming in here. Um, just converts three phase alternating current, which is wild three phase. So the frequency and the voltage varies with the um, RPM of the wind turbine and the wind speed. This is a stop switch. This just shorts the three phase off out. So if I turn this off, the wind turbine would be off, um, meaning that all three phases are shorted and the wind turbine will stop or come to a very slow spin. From the rectifier um, on this system, and this is getting a little bit fancy, we go into a, a Midnight Classic controller. This controller, we can enter a power curve into it so that at a certain voltage, we can ask for a certain amount of current um, and allow us to adjust the power curve so that the alternator is hopefully always in a sweet spot at any given RPM. This allows the blades to work at their optimum tip speed, um, keep the tip speed ratio optimal across a range of wind speeds. It also allows us to let the voltage rise and the alternator runs quite a bit more efficiently. I don't usually use these. Um, it does cost money and it adds complexity. One problem with doing this is this has a 150 volt limit. The wind turbine would happily push this over 150 volts, in which case the magic smoke will come out of the classic. Um, Midnight sells a device to protect the classic called the, the Midnight Clipper. And what the clipper will do is any energy that the clipper cannot put into the battery in order to protect the clipper um, and keep the wind turbine under load, it will waste to heat. In this case, we're using the WinTAC controller, which my friend Roy built. This one's currently showing a fault. Um, it's actually showing um, not a fault. It's saying the battery is full. Um, it's flashing like that. So what this will do, basically, is, is when the battery reaches a certain voltage, um, full or near full, it will shut the wind turbine down. In this case, we shut down a little over 54 volts because it's a lithium battery, and we come back on at about 53. Kind of neat, because um, we're, we're not really letting the wind turbine finish off the charge for these batteries, but we'll let it get them up to about 90% and um, let the solar f do the last 10%. Um, this is cool, though, because it stops the wind turbine when the batteries are near full and saves a lot of wear and tear. And then, and it stops it by shorting it out. Um, it uses this IGBT to um, short this three-phase rectifier on the DC side, and that will stop the turbine. <clears throat> it's kind of fun to watch. Um, when the battery's almost full, you'll see things happen like a cloud goes overhead. The, the turbine will stop in the, in the sun because the solar panels are giving it loads of current and then the, um, a cloud will come over and the wind turbine will come back on um, and that sort of thing. Or the battery could be near full, the turbine will stop, but Mike could hit a big load like the air conditioner or the well pump and um, the turbine will come on while that load's on and then it will shut back down when it's no longer needed. So that's pretty cool. But the in this case, the battery's full when the voltage drops, the wind turbine will come back on. That's about it for the wind turbine. Um, rest of the system here, we've got three magnum inverters stacked for, um, I forget, I think it's about 15,000 watts or something of 240 volt AC. Kind of a nice system. We have our midnight MOVs for lightning protection.
automatic generator start. Uh, the battery, we'll look at those real fast. It's back here. Actually, oh, one thing about this system. we um, I just took three midnight charge controllers off the wall. All three were defective. Um, two were from a series that was under recall, so they were open circuit. One of them was old, and it was short-circuited, so I removed all of those, and temporarily I have put this old Morningstar MPPT controller in. So at the moment, we're only running with about a third of the uh, solar. That stuff happens. And there are the three dead midnight controllers and the Discover batteries. And they're all tied together in parallel with the Victron bus bar. Anyhow, that is the system. It's pretty cool. It's mostly running good. That's all.